Hey, what is going on, everybody? My name is Payne, and welcome back to another video in a series that I like to call the Studio Ghibli Project. I finally have this damn series uh, a name after a while. Uh, I was talking with a couple of people, and I just thought Studio Ghibli Project worked really well in my head. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I know that you know it's been a while since I uploaded a video. I spent longer than usual writing the script because there was just so much here. And I don't want to spend too much on this opening. So let's get right into this. This is the one Wait, what and about the uh, me? What? Aren't, aren't you the one to credit me for the script too? Oh, yeah, no, I forgot. I think I should tell you who this guy is. Uh, uh, started about a couple of weeks ago when I reviewed My Name the Yamadas. Uh, it was about, probably about a couple of days before I wrote the script for it when I woke up one morning to hear this guy right here. He was laying on my couch, laptop on his lap, full volume, watching Attack on Titan. And I would have finished that episode too if you didn't slam the laptop right in front of me. I didn't know who you were. What else was I supposed to do? Well, now that you know, go ahead and tell him. <sighs> I guess I should. So, after I caught my composure and almost strangled him, uh, he told me that he, believe it or not, actually came from my head. Basically what happened was that you were paying attention to the baseball so fucking much because you left every day that you didn't have any time in your head to pay attention to anime anymore. Therefore, something had to happen. So I came out in the middle of the night and basically right now I present the uh, physical embodiment of most of what you know about anime. So that's how we came to be. But now that that was going to be happening, I need to do something to keep him in one place because ever since he came here, the routine has been he stays here and watches anime and I go out and do my job. I go out and, and go to work every day. And that shit was getting lonely. How long were you at work? Ten hours? And you don't go back until midnight? Look at yourself, man. Look at yourself. You've changed. You've blended in with your surroundings and you barely even watch this shit anymore. Okay, look, maybe I'm hanging out with people mostly that don't really talk about anime or don't like anime, but that doesn't mean that I changed. Well, that shit isn't good enough for me. I remember there was a time where you said that you loved making these videos back when you were at your house. And now, you know, I just, I just don't want to sit there watching you go away from what you want to do, which is make these videos and go on to your actual job. I know that that's your mindset at the moment, but Jesus, man, you needed to keep making these videos. I wanted to see you happy again. So when I f found out that you wanted to make videos again while you're here for the summer, I came out and I whipped out the first review for you. I didn't want to give you too much work, so I just straight up worked on it. And that's been the routine ever since. I go to work, he writes on the scripts and watches a lot of anime, and then he, help, and then he you know, asked me to help out on the script and I make the video and edit it and record it. Um, you know, I also, after a while, I gave him a name. I, it, it took me a while, but yeah, you know, I think I got the perfect name for him. He called me Peyton. This fucker called me Peyton. That's similar to his own goddamn name. How can he give me such unoriginal garbage after he's helped me creatively? You piece of sh- Aren't you supposed to go somewhere to get some food or something? Oh. Yeah, you know, now that I think about it, yeah, I should. Yeah, to be honest, I think I've done all I needed to do here. I'll just let you do your thing. I'm going to go to Safeway real quick. I'm going to take your wallet. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, oh, where's your wallet? Uh, damn it, you're really evasive. I can't find your fucking wallet. Oh, here it is. All right, you know, I'm going to go to Safeway. Uh, I'm going to possibly see you soon. Uh, ask you how the video went. Okay. Finally got past that. Roll the clips, you know, fade in the clips. Let's get this damn thing started.
When you ask anyone who's in their late teens or early 20s that doesn't know that much about anime, but does know a little bit about Studio Ghibli, chances are they're going to know about a certain movie known as Spirited Away. For me, this is the first Studio Ghibli film in a while that I've reviewed where it has had a personal effect on either me or a good friend of mine, someone I know, and I've actually been a long time fan of this movie in particular. I even have a book with me in the dorm that has some amazing artwork from Ghibli, as well as the entire script from the English dub. I bought it before I went down here, it's very cool, and I look at it more than you think. <laughs> Not only did this movie do very well in the US, in Japan, this movie broke box office records, becoming the highest grossing film in Japanese history with over 30 billion yen, and is slowly taking back its place after, first off, Your Name took that title, I've said that, but also, for the first time in 18 years, Spirited Away is premiering in China. It actually started premiering in China not too long ago. I think about a month ago, around that. And slowly, Spirited Away is coming back up in terms of grossing the most money in the box office out of any anime film. This movie is also credited with jumpstarting anime culture into the mainstream, something that if I gotta be honest, hasn't really lost traction since. Because ever since the movie came out in the United States, the former chief creative officer at Disney and Pixar, John Lasseter, and the guy that made it possible to have Spirited Away in the United States, had been bugging voters for the Academy Awards to give this movie an Oscar because apparently in his eyes it was that good. And in 2003, the Academy did just that by giving Spirited Away and its director, Hayao Miyazaki, the Oscar for the Best Animated Feature that year. And the Oscar goes to, let's see, Spirited Away, Hayao Miyazaki. He didn't even show up to receive the award that year because he was pissed about the U.S. going into war in Iraq, but he would eventually get the Oscar at the 2014 Governor's Awards. Regardless, it was one of numerous awards that Ghibli got for the movie over the span of the next year and a half, and ever since, it is said to solidify Miyazaki as a true legend in the animation industry, and it's been hailed as one of the greatest animated films of all time. Now, unlike the other Studio Ghibli films, I know that a huge majority of the people watching this have seen the movie, so with this quick synopsis, I'm just going to breeze by talking about certain characters and moments from the film. It doesn't mean it's going to be short, but I'll try talking about the, the main points. <laughs> So first off, I think I should just mention the overall production of the movie itself. Spirited Away is a drama, fantasy, action film that was directed and written by Hayao Miyazaki, produced by Toshio Suzuki, and was made by Studio Ghibli. It came out on July 20th, 2001 in Japan. It was released here in the United States first on September 20th of 2002. It was released on DVD and VHS in the U.S. on April of 2003, and G-Kids bought the rights to distribute the movie on October 17th, 2017. Uh, it is currently 125 minutes long, or 2 hours and 5 minutes long. The film follows a girl named Chihiro as she is forced to work in a bathhouse in the spirit world right next to what looks like an abandoned amusement park as her parents are being kept as pigs to symbolize the amount of greed they had because they were eating a lot of food at an unattended stall. She is told by a young boy named Haku to get a job with Kamaji, the boiler man at the bathhouse, before she ends up meeting the head of the bathhouse, a witch named Yubaba. After trying to scare Chihiro away, Yubaba gives her a job, but in return she takes her name and renames her Sen, and over time she would forget what her name was and her memories in general. When she meets Haku again, he tells her that Yubaba takes control of people by taking their names, and if she doesn't remember her name, she'll never leave the spirit world. So she starts working in the bathhouse, and during that time, she lets a silent creature named No-Face into the bathhouse, and while she's cleaning the quote-unquote stink spirits, she reveals that it was the spirit of a polluted river and is given a magic dumpling that she saves for her parents when they turn back to normal. Meanwhile, No-Face imitates the gold left behind by the Sting Spirit and tempts a worker with the gold and then swallows him. Over time, he would demand food, begins tipping extensively, and will eat a couple more workers using the voice of the worker that he ate originally. Sen later discovers that Haku is a Japanese dragon and finds him gravely injured after he was being chased by a bunch of paper, shikigami, 
Uh, after finding him in Yubaba's penthouse at the top of the bathhouse, one of the Shikigamis is revealed to be Yubaba's twin sister, Zeniba, who first turned Yubaba's baby son, Bo, into a mouse and turns her harpy into a small bird and tells Sen that Haku has stolen a magic golden seal from her and warns Sen that it carries a deadly curse. After falling into the boiler room, Sen feeds him the dumpling that makes him throw up both the seal and a black slug that Yubaba used to control Haku. Sen decides to take the seal back to Zaniba by train, but before she leaves, she is chased around by a now giant no-face after she feeds him the rest of the dumpling. After they are both out of the bathhouse, they get into a train to Zaniba's house in what is easily the most famous scene in the movie. You could argue the most famous scene in animation, but it just says a lot. Uh, in terms of what has already happened in the movie. A perfect segue from chaos to just absolute peace. But at the same time, they know that they're not out of the woods yet. And while at Zaniba's house, Sen discovers that the black slug was used to control Haku and that her love broke the curse. Yeah, that's, that's what was said. No Face decided to stay in Zaniba's house while Haku, in his dragon form, flies Sen and Bo back to the bathhouse where Sen helps Haku remember what his real identity is, to which he was the Kohaku River, which Sen remembers playing in as a child before it was taken out to make room for apartments. The film ends with Sen guessing who her parents are out of a group of pigs, therefore expiring her contract, making her name go back to Chihiro, and they drive away from the tunnel where they arrived from at the beginning of the film. While this film does have some fascinating aspects to it, the backstory for this one is easily the best and most intriguing production story out of all the all of these Ghibli films so far. The story of how Spirited Away came to be started at a mountain cabin that the family of the director, Hayao Miyazaki, goes to every summer, as well as the families of Miyazaki's friends and co-workers, whose children are mainly girls. He then decided that he wanted to make a film for these girls. Why? Well, uh, it's a little blurry. <laughs> he started by... Trying to find some inspiration, he started reading manga that the girls left uh, left behind, mainly just shoujo manga, and after finding out that they only cover topics such as like romance and fashion, you know, just basically a bunch of stuff that, <laughs> that uh, girls now pay attention to, uh, Miyazaki decides to take, uh, to take all that information and make a female protagonist that they can easily look up to rather than try to look like. Spirited Away was the latest pitch for Miyazaki after his two previous pr proposals were rejected, both of which actually had a bathhouse in it, as he was inspired by a bathhouse that he went to in his hometown when he was a kid. While talking about the movie, Miyazaki said that he thought the bathhouse in his hometown was a very mysterious place and that there was a door in the bathhouse that he made up several stories around, one of them being the inspiration to the bathhouse setting in Spirited Away. Just like with the last few films that Studio Ghibli made, Spirited Away was partly made with computer animation, but what makes this a very unique case was that this was the first time that a G Studio Ghibli film directed by Miyazaki would have more than five minutes of CG, coming from a guy who, even after Spirited Away, working on movies like Howl's Moving Castle and Ponyo and The Wind Freaking Rises, would still go through the old school route of traditional animation. Uh, said something about how Princess Mononoke had about five minutes of animation. You know, Ghibli didn't know that much about that yet. Whisper of the Heart had a scene in it. My Neighbor the Yamadas was just full 100% like computer animation, which fit for what movie they were trying to make. Here for Hayao Miyazaki, this is definitely new territory, and it ended up working very well for him in the end. But for Spirited Away and the animators, though, they had to learn how to use certain computer software like Soft Image 3D before they started working on the movie. But Miyazaki didn't want to use c computer animation too much as it would take away from the movie. One of the biggest struggles when it came to, to the writing process in this movie, apart from Miyazaki you know, wanting to be open to animation, just wasn't open to it too much, was what the length was going to be. If we were watching Spirited Away a with the entire story coming from Hayao Miyazaki with no cuts and just the entire story coming from his head, Spirited Away would be almost three hours long, considering that the final project, again, going back to what I said at the beginning, is two hours and five minutes. And considering that that's the case, that's a large chunk of the movie that's taken out. He had to delete multiple scenes from the movie, especially ones that Miyazaki had considered fan service because he wanted to portray a girl that grows to become a woman, not 
just like every other shoujo anime and stuff that was going on at the time. And just like at the end of Princess Mononoke, when that was released, Miyazaki said that he was retiring again, once again, saying that he is done from feature-length films. And unfortunately, unlike when he retired from Princess Mononoke, I didn't really get that much information about it, but all I know is that he did eventually come back and he made House Moving Castle. As with many of Miyazaki's other films, there were also a number of cases of symbolism in the movie that, considering I rewatched it just recently with a friend, I never knew how obvious but clever these symbols were. The first ones I noticed were the obvious environmental messages Miyazaki put in his movies, like the snake spirit that is discovered to be polluted, a uh, polluted river after Sen takes out a lot of garbage, including some car tires and even a bike, and Haku discovering to be the Kohaku River that Chihiro used to play in when she was younger, representing how people would just destroy nature to feed their hunger for development. But, to no one's surprise at all, there was more to it. There were a number of themes that were heavily in influenced by Japanese Shinto Buddhist culture, mainly seen in the setting of the bathhouse, as well as the people in the bathhouse, including many forms of kami, which are seen as many different plants and animals, given the idea that everything has a form of life to it, and it's, it's, it's another way to show that there are also living creatures in this world, making a similarity between the real world and the spirit world. There's also a couple of examples regarding the theme of Chihiro transitioning from being a kid into an adult, such as going into the spirit world, as well as standing out over there uh, in the bathhouse as being the only human, one of a couple of humans. Uh, and when she gets the job from Yubaba, her name is taken away from her, which also symbolizes heavily in her transition into being a young woman, to going into adulthood. One of the more surprising examples of symbolism in this movie has been the large number of capitalist meanings in this movie. Miyazaki said that when he made this movie, he wanted to connect the times when Japan wasn't in an economic crisis as they were during that time in 2001, meaning that Chihiro finding her past self is another way for Miyazaki trying to connect to past Japan. Yubaba taking Chihiro's name and changing it to Sen is also an example of the single-minded values of capitalism because of simple wor wordplay. <laughs> Sen, uh, for people who do not know, in English means a thousand. So it is pretty clever wordplay to go towards that. Miyazaki also represents the influence of Western capitalism from the West in Japan and what the effects it had over there, uh, starting in the Meiji period from Yubaba's penthouse being all decorated unlike the living quarters for the workers, the Meiji period era of abandoned amusement park, to the transformation of Chihiro's parents at the beginning of the movie where they park in front of the tunnel in an Audi, the father wears a goddamn polo shirt, giving the impression that Chihiro's family has money, which makes makes it all the more ironic when they are transformed into pigs. One character that just catches my attention when he's on screen, uh, and I know that there's going to be people who are after my head after I only talked about him once, is No-Face. Uh, the story around him is that he consumes not only the people in the bathhouse, but also their character traits as well. And it's because of this that he goes on this rampage after Sen, because Sen was always shunned by most of the other workers before No-Face came in. Uh, No-Face is also another example of greed in the film, as he attempts the workers in the bathhouse with gold, symbolizing the lengths that the people in the bathhouse can go to get more money, but it instead ends up getting them consumed by capitalism. This movie is also compared to a couple of other timeless classics like The Alice in Wonderland and Wizard of Oz, and to that I say no shit! I'm sorry, to anyone who's a fan of this movie, I just gotta say this right here. Spirited Away is an isekai. I just, just gotta say that. There are some people who already know, is like, oh yeah, we know it's an isekai, we just don't want to use the word. Well, I'm gonna say the word, because I don't care. This is, this is an isekai. This is what it is. Alright, it, it has the main character going into another world, doing some stuff over there, and then coming back. Uh, I know that in this day and age, using the word isekai seems to trigger some mild to very bad forms of PTSD, as well as the recent search of them now coming out in light novel form and anime form, but yeah, this is what Spirited Away is to me, and it's a very good isekai at that. It also does a really good job in what it does compared to isekais now, which is the main character comes back. Like, I saw a slime isekai, that guy's staying there. I, I saw Katasuba. Kazuma stays there. Chihiro at least comes back. I know there's a couple other examples of people coming back. It's just, compared to what's going on right now, or most of the isekai out right now, she at least went back and there's a happy ending. Alright, now, ugh. After all that, 
Here's how I saw Spirited Away. Here is my take on the movie. First thing I want to mention is the animation, which, if I gotta be honest, is among the best that Ghibli has ever put out, in my opinion. The use of lighting and shading at night in the spirit world is absolutely phenomenal. And the use of detail and little movements that Shihiro and the other characters make are amazing, as it's really hard to find any other studio that puts that much detail into such little movements like that. The music, as usual, is absolutely gorgeous, as it's done by one of, if not the greatest film composer, Joe Hisaishi, um, you know, given John Williams a run for his money. The soundtrack is absolutely breathtaking, both mixed in with the movie and as a standalone soundtrack. And it's because of this movie that tracks like One Summer Night and The Sixth Station, which is the track that goes on during the train scene, are just some of those memorable pieces of music in the history of animation. As for the plot, I'm a little bit mixed on it. The story does rely heavily on its characters and how they are represented in the movie. A few examples include Lynn, another human worker in the bathhouse who helps Sen out and represents the line between the real and spirit worlds for Sen, and Kamaji, again, the guy who looks like if Jim Carrey had multiple arms, who is a victim of the Yubaba's reign on the bathhouse, but knows that, and he's just straight up accepting it. And finally, Yubaba, who takes away Chihiro's identity and name, but you can't really call her a villain, because all she's doing is running a bathhouse, and everyone else in the bathhouse, who you can argue was once human, before Yubaba took their identities away. But my main problem with the story and the plot is that the characters are covered in only about half of the movie. The other half just feels very shallow and is just there to stretch the movie into over two hours. Apart from the characters and what their roles are to Chihiro, it felt like the movie was also trying to display the animation and the setting, and there were times where they put that in front of their main goal, which is presenting a story. They put it in as filler for when there's a pause in the progression of the story, basically. In my opinion, I felt like this movie should not have been two hours. And if it was going to be two hours anyway, it makes me want to ask Miyazaki what else did he have in mind. Because again, this movie was almost three hours long, but Miyazaki had to cut some parts out. Now I want to know, was there any scenes that Miyazaki cut out that would have been better for the story? That would have got rid of filler and it would have made the entire run runtime after putting Miyazaki shit in worth it. Overall, the characters were very memorable for me. As usual, Miyazaki does a great job of again blurring the line between heroes and villains. It felt like the only character that I saw have any progression in the story in Shihiro and she is easily, no joke, the best character in the movie. Miyazaki did an amazing job at making her a suitable role model and person to look up to, but for everyone else, there was just no depth to them outside of the movie that was said, and they just felt pretty flat at the end of the day. Throughout the time since I started talking about this movie with people, I have met a number of people who grew up with this film and think that this is the greatest Ghibli film, and I've met a number of people who also think that this film is overrated, overplayed, and overhyped to the point where they're annoyed every time they hear the name of the movie. And after watching it, for me, it's a little bit of both. Well, I do believe that this is far from a bad film, Studio Ghibli has made better movies. Miyazaki has made better films. But because of this is the only Studio Ghibli film and the latest anime film to win an Oscar, it's being shown everywhere, there's more merchandise around it compared to My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, uh... Princess Mononoke, and it's fine to have stuff being made around the movie. Uh, hell, I would probably buy some Fear, Spirited Away stuff uh, if I had the chance. In fact, I actually did. About a couple days ago, I got this shirt. So, you know, I already bought some stuff from Studio Ghibli. Oh, that's terrible. So, now I want to get to the main question. Is Spirited Away the best Ghibli film? No. To me, it's in my top three, but I don't think it's the best Studio Ghibli film. I can name off two that are better. One of them is Princess Mononoke. That, that one's still my favorite Ghibli film. Does that mean that Spirited Away is bad? Hell no. It's far from perfect, but it's a very good film, and I would watch it multiple times if I had the chance to. To me, Spirited Away is the best example of a movie that is both great and overrated at the same time. And with that, I'm going to give Spirited Away an 8 out of 10. All right. 
thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, this was definitely a huge creative jump for me with the with the skit at the beginning. I'm planning on doing that some more in the future. I just had a I just had like an inspiration to do it. Uh, but if you like the video, if you like the thing that I'm trying out, uh, if you like the fact that I talked about Spirit Away, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more videos like this and skits like that in the future, I hit the hit the subscribe button both on the screen and both down in the channel. And if you want to see any videos that I made in the past, there are some videos on the screen, also in the description and on the channel. And with that, my name is Payne. I'll see you in the next video.